In the last video, we learned about DFA. We write its definition, we created its graphical representation, and we also created its transition table. This video is about NFA and comparing NFA and DFA. The definition of NFA, which stands for Non-Deterministic Finite Automata, is exactly the same except the only difference is in the definition of transition function. So the transition function of NFA takes set of states Q and set of input symbols sigma union empty string and then it maps them to the power set of the set of states. Except the transition function, the rest of the definition of NFA and DFA are exactly the same. So how this transition function is different as compared to the transition function of DFA. The transition function of DFA dictates that for every input symbol, we can go to exactly one state. However, in contrast, in case of NFA, we can take the same input, let's say A, and we can go to two different states. In this example, I am taking the input A and I can go from Q0 to Q0 and I can take the input A and transition to state Q1. This was not possible in DFA. In DFA, we can only go to one state via one input symbol. Similarly, in case of NFA, we can also change our state via empty string or epsilon input. So we have not consumed any input and we have transitioned from state Q1 to Q0. Let's make this NFA with some more transitions. So this is our NFA. Now also notice that, that from Q1, we have no transition on input symbol A. So we don't have to consume all of our input symbols. In this example, my input symbols are A and B. Now let's create transition table of this NFA. So transition table of this NFA will have input symbols and epsilon in columns and the row will have all our states q0, q1 and q2. In the body of this transition table, we will have the output of transition function which takes input a specific state, input symbol or an empty string. When I was at state Q0 and I see the input symbol uh, A, then I transition to state Q0 and I also transition to state Q1. That's why here I have power set. So, and the power set also contain empty set. This is the output of my transition function. If it takes input state Q0 and input symbol A. Now, if my transition function takes input Q0 and input symbol B, then it transition to no new state. So we have nothing here. And this is allowed because 
the power set contains empty set also next on state q0 and epsilon we has once again nothing here and at q1 with input symbol a we have nothing at q1 with input symbol b we go to q3 when we are on q1 then on epsilon we go to a state q0 so in this case i have not written my output in a form of set because i would always have a single state in case of dfa as my output where the transition function for nfa gives me a set that can contains either none or multiple states as output instead of using dash i think the better way is to use here empty set symbol now at q2 with input symbol a i go nowhere when i am on q2 at input symbol b i go nowhere similarly using epsilon from q2 i go nowhere so this is the transition table of my nfa now the important question which one is better and which one is more powerful which is more faster etc let's make a table and compare nfa and dfa so in this table i have here nfa and i have here dfa so first in terms of power the power implies that which of those machines except a larger set of languages so both of those machines are equal in power because both of those machine except regular languages so both of those machines are equivalent to each other in terms of power so both accepts regular languages now the second which one is faster for a computer to process now if i give my computer these two different transition tables it will able to process this transition table much faster because here from input to the final state so one of this must be the final state let's say this one we can have multiple paths so here i can have multiple path from the start state using the same input some of those path might take me to the final state some might not take me to the final state here i will have always a single path from the start state to the end state wherever my input takes me so this is much faster for the computer to process as compared to this so this is slow or this is faster next which one of those are easier to create by humans and easier to create by computer given a regular language a computer can readily convert the regular language into nfa however taking a regular language or regular expression and convert it to dfa is not that straightforward therefore computer usually start with the regular expression create nfa and then from the nfa we can create dfa so that's how computer goes because creating nfa is easy for the computer as compared to dfa also for us humans because nfa has less rules we can transition even using epsilon and we don't have to transition on all the input symbols so also for humans creating nfa is easier so this is easier this is difficult lastly which has more states which will be larger in size so nfa is exponentially smaller in size as compared to dfa so this is usually smaller 
and this is larger as compared to each other. So that's our comparison of NFA and DFA that both have equal power because both accept regular languages but NFA is slower and DFA is faster then creating NFA via computer or by ourselves is easier as compared to DFA and finally NFA are smaller in size in terms of number of states and links as compared to DFA. DFA can have exponentially more states. So that is it for this video. I hope that you will be able to understand the difference between NFA and DFA. You will be able to appreciate the difference in their transition tables and in their diagrams and you will be able to see the uh, theoretical difference between them. That's it for this video. See you next time. Bye.